everyone. Thank you for joining me for another Dig In lesson. Today we're actually going to slow way down and take a look back at what we've been doing. We just had some pretty big events happen in our church calendar and what we've been learning as well. So we want to take some time to make sure we all understand it. First, let's talk about the 40 days leading up to Easter. We have a special word for these days. It starts with an L. Does anyone remember what that L word is we use to describe the 40 days leading up to Easter? That's right, it's Lent. Let's think about this time during Jesus' day. So way back then, Jesus knew what was going to happen. God had told Jesus long before that he would be the sacrifice to save all of us from our sins. And I don't know about you, but if I were Jesus, that would be all I could think about. So during Lent, we take time to reflect on ourselves the way Jesus was reflecting during that time before the crucifixion. Let's try to put ourselves in Jesus' place. Can you imagine going to Jerusalem knowing that when you would get there, you'd be crucified and put to death? Would you still go to Jerusalem? I don't know if I would be strong enough to do that. But do you know who was? Jesus was. And he did it for us. We have a special day to celebrate when Jesus was traveling and arriving in Jerusalem. Does anyone remember what that day was? Here's a reminder. Who said it? That's right. It was Palm Sunday. And do you remember what happened that day? Jesus' disciples went and found a young fowl or donkey. And there's a special C word we had for it. Do you remember what it was? A colt. Good job. And he rode this colt into town. Do you remember what the people did? They put down their coats and palm leaves to create a path for the king because Jesus is our king. Let's rewatch one of our videos from a few weeks ago to help us remember that. Here we go. Ready? Okay, it's on. Go. I'm ready now. Now? It's taping. Oh, once there was a man named Jesus, and Jesus had lots of friends. But he liked 12 of them the best. They were the disciples. Ark, my name is Judas. Jesus, I will betray you. Ark. Sorry. One day, Jesus went to Jerusalem, and the town there was going to throw him a big parade. So his friends were excited, because at parades, you get candy. <laughs> but before they got there, Jesus needed something to ride. So he got two of his friends to go get him a young donkey. I thought it was a colt, not a donkey. A young donkey is called a colt. I thought everyone knew that. Oh. But where will we get this colt? Well, in the village ahead of you, of course. You'll find the colt tied there that no one has ever ridden. But what if the people see us taking it? Won't that be stealing? Just tell them that the Lord needs it, and he'll return it back there shortly. So the two disciples left to go get the cool. Whoa, that's a big cool. Let's go get him. Hey, what are you two doing down there? Nothing, just get a 
like this huge coal. Jesus needs to borrow it for a little while. Okay, sounds good to me. Come on, cool. Let's get a move on. No, oh, no, much. Buster. Oh, stop. Okay, ready? Ready. Master, the coat was right where you said it would be. Ooh, that's. that's <laughs> oh! Oh, 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 no, Jesus! Oh, not Jesus! Please, God, don't eat the Son of God! Our dog's eating Jesus! We had to get another cult. We brought you that cult, Jesus! Ooh, that's a good looking cult. Has it ever been ridden? Nope, no one's ever ridden it. So then, Jesus got on the colt and started to ride into Jerusalem. When he got there, the people took off their coats and shirts and threw them on the ground for Jesus to ride his colt over. After all the people had put their coats down for Jesus to ride his colt over, Jesus rides into town and all the people start cheering. Woo, Jesus! They were praising God! They shouted, Hosanna! And blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! They shouted like they were at a football game. Everybody loved Jesus, who was riding on a colt when he entered Jerusalem. That's a wrap. After Jesus arrived in Jerusalem, he was arrested and brought in front of Pontius Pilate. Now Pilate was a Roman soldier who was in charge of the prison, and he had a choice. He could imprison Jesus, which he knew would make Jesus suffer, or he could let Barabbas go. And remember, Barabbas was actually a criminal. Pilate knew that punishing Jesus was wrong, but he was pressured from a whole lot of people to do it anyway. There was so much pressure for him to make this decision, so instead he took it to the people. He let the people vote whether or not to let Jesus or Barabbas go. Do you know what the people voted? That's right, they let Barabbas go. Isn't that wild? Jesus hadn't done anything. Why did he get to go to prison and suffer? But remember, Jesus knew all this would happen. He knew that he would be punished and suffer before being crucified. But he did it anyway, and he did it for us, because Jesus understood what it meant to suffer. He understood that his suffering would save us. So let's play a game. Adults, can you get out the bowls and the candy? That's right, I said candy. But you have to listen to the instructions, okay? Give the kids the bag of candy. I'm going to give you one minute to fit as much candy as you can into your bowl. You can stack it high, you can make a pyramid, you can try to stuff it in there, however you think is going to work best to get as much candy into your bowl as you can. We want to get the whole bag in there. Can you do it? Let's see. When the timer starts, you have one minute to do it. And when the time is up, that's it. Ready? Go. That's it. Time's up. Hands away. No more. 
How did it feel to have so much candy that you couldn't possibly fit it in your bowl? Just like your bowls are overflowing with candy, Jesus' heart is overflowing with love for you. Have you ever felt Jesus' love? I know. I feel it every day I get to see you guys and give you guys a big hug. Have you ever felt Jesus' love? I'm going to give you another minute. Talk about it with whoever's around. All right, time's up, come back. It felt exciting to see how much sweet stuff we could fit in our bowls. In fact, our bowls couldn't even hold all that candy. And in the same way, Jesus' sweet love for us is so much that it overflowed when he died on the cross. Jesus loves us so much that he died for us. Now let's remember when he died. Kids, if it's all right with the adults, you can have one piece of candy while I read this. I'm going to read from the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 32. It says, As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. So, take a second. Jesus had been put in prison, and then he was carrying the cross up to the hill to be crucified. And that cross was so heavy. Before Simon carried the cross, Jesus carried it, but he had been beaten and whipped, and it got too heavy for him to carry. Let's see how tired Jesus must have been carrying the cross. I want you to get your gallon of water or your heavy item that the adults have for you. I'm going to put the timer up for 10 seconds. And we're going to see how it feels to hold up this heavy object. Are you ready? On your mark, get set, lift it. Okay, you can set it back down. How did you feel trying to hold it up? Was it heavy? Well, the cross was much heavier than the water you were holding up. And imagine if you were already injured and hurt. Jesus had been flogged with a whip, and the soldiers beat him with a stick and even hit him in the head with it. But Jesus still carried the cross as far as he could because Jesus loves us so much that he died for us. Once they got Jesus and the cross to a lonely hill called Golgotha, they also called it the skull, they stopped. They nailed Jesus to the cross like a criminal. Can you make a hammer sound like we're ham like they nailed Jesus to the cross? Wow. They nailed in his hands. But Jesus loved us so much that he died for us. And he let himself be nailed to a cross because he loves you and me and all of us. And while he hung there on the cross, people mocked him. Let's listen to what they said. In the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verses 39 through 44, it says, Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, Save yourself. Come down off the cross if you're really the Son of God. 
In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders also mocked him. They said, he saved others, but he can't save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and then we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults at him. So he's sitting there nailed to the cross, and people are just mocking him and saying mean things. Think about a time someone said something mean to you and how much that hurt your heart. Are you thinking? Jesus was already feeling intense physical pain and they mocked him. It must have been awful, but this is what Jesus said. In the first part of Luke, verse 23-34, it says, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Wow! Wait a second, I have to repeat that. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Jesus had been beaten and mocked and he was being murdered and he still forgave the people doing it? That's how much Jesus loves. And he loves us so much that he died for us. He died to forgive everyone, even the very people who had nailed him to the cross. Jesus forgave them because he loved them too. After Jesus died, a rich man named Joseph, who had become a follower of Jesus, asked Pilate for Jesus' body. And Joseph placed the body in his own new tomb, which he had been saving for when he died. Now, a tomb was kind of like a small cave, and he put Jesus' body in it. After he placed Jesus' body in the tomb, Joseph rolled a big stone in front of the tomb. What a sad day. Jesus loves us so much that he died for us. And I'm so thankful for that, aren't you? But it's still sad to think that Jesus had to suffer and die. But you know what? That's not the end of the story. Let's keep going. Three days later, the women went to the tomb to put the incense on Jesus. Do you remember last week when I had the cinnamon that smelled really good? Do you remember what the woman found when they got there? The stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty because Jesus was alive. And that is what we celebrated last Sunday on Easter. Jesus was alive then and Jesus is alive now. Even though he died, Jesus came back to life. But it might have been confusing to figure out what happened at first. What are some ideas you think people might have had about what happened? Hmm? People probably thought that someone stole the body? Or something like that? Or maybe Pontius Pilate came back and took the body back? I don't know. What do you think happened? Okay, okay. Let's watch a news broadcast live from the tomb to learn some theories about what people thought had happened. And live at the scene is Channel 6 reporter Eli Rosenberg. Eli, what's happening there? Well, Dave, it's difficult to tell exactly what's happening. The police are still investigating the crime scene here. But we do know that authorities are still searching this entire area. Here's what we know at this point. Here in this tomb, the body of Jesus was buried. Now Jesus is the man who only days ago was killed by the Romans. Now Roman soldiers were sent to this tomb to guard it. And still, someone or something was able to come in and steal Jesus' body. So the focus of the search at this point is finding that body and returning it to this open tomb. Now I have with me here one of the men who was in charge of guarding this tomb. Sir, can you tell us what happened? Absolutely. Well, I was uh, guarding this tomb when something, uh, something strange happened. Something strange? What was that? That's correct, sir. Well, I was uh, very happy and excited to have this incredibly important job. Um, but then all of a sudden, 
I started getting a little sleepy. And then what happened? Well, I had a, another guard here. He said the same thing happened to him. We fell asleep, and then the next thing we know, we're waking up to all this commotion about a missing body. So did everyone fall asleep? That's, that's correct, sir. I believe the thieves used some sort of a, um, a, a sleeping gas. Made it very easy to steal, steal the body over there. Oh, pardon me. Where did you get all of that money? Oh, um, pardon me. Uh, this, uh, what money? This, uh, well, this, this is money? Let me tell you this. Certainly not a bribe. <laughs> Definitely not a bribe. Nope. Well, it certainly looks like someone has paid you to change your story. What really happened here? I, if you're implying that someone bribed me to say I fell asleep and someone stole the body, well then, uh, uh, no, no. And I, I gotta go. Important Roman things. Thank you. Bye. Hmm. Well, that's an interesting perspective. But let's see if we can get another one. I, I think I see a couple of witnesses here. Sir, ma'am, could you join us? I'd like to ask you a few questions. So, were you here at the tomb? Uh, yes, we were here. And you are? Um, oh, I'm John, and uh, this is Mary, and we're followers of Jesus. I see. So, uh, what do you know about the evidence of this crime? Uh, none. There, there was no crime here. You don't call stealing a body a crime? Uh, sure, but that's not what happened here. Yeah, Jesus' body is gone, but nobody took it. I don't understand. What, what he means is that Jesus is alive now. But we just saw him die on the cross days ago. It's not like it's a surprise or anything. Jesus said that he would suffer and die, and then three days later he would rise again, and that's just what happened. Jesus is alive now. Well, I realize you've been through a traumatic experience, but let's be honest. Dead men don't stand up and just walk out of a tomb. If Jesus were just any man, I would agree. But he's not just a man. He's the son of God. And, and he's alive now. And yet you're crying. I'm not crying because I'm sad. I'm crying because I'm happy. Jesus is alive right now. It, look, the police can look all they want they're not gonna find Jesus' body just lying around because he's not dead. Jesus is alive now. Well, we've heard reports from Roman guards that while they were asleep, someone came and stole Jesus' body. What do you have to say about that? I can see where you might think that, but I saw him for myself. He even spoke my name. His body was not stolen. Jesus is alive now. Well, there you have it. Reporting outside Jerusalem, this is Eli Rosenberg. Back to you, Dave. Why do you believe or don't believe the guard's story, hmm? Maybe because of the money that dropped out of his pocket? Maybe because he was kind of stuttering and mumbling and he wasn't very clear. What makes Mary and John more believable? Okay, you know, I felt like I could see it on their face that they really believed what they were saying. Jesus' enemies tried to convince people that it was a trick, but was it? No, no trick. Mary and John saw Jesus after he came back to life. Jesus was alive then, and Jesus is alive now. After Mary and John saw him, Jesus went to visit the disciples. And the disciples were in a locked room. They were afraid of the Jewish leaders, so they were hiding with the doors locked, so no one could get in. And Jesus was not with them. Let's read from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 20. It says, On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together and the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them, and he said, Peace be with you. 
After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Now, when the disciples saw Jesus appear, it was real. They even got to see his wounds. Jesus showed them to help them believe. And Jesus helps us believe, too. Jesus had to prove to his friends that he was alive. So he showed them the wounds on his physical body. He ate food as they watched. He let them hear him when he said, Peace be with you. Jesus was proving to his friends that he was alive. Jesus helped them believe, and Jesus helps us believe in him too. But remember, there was one disciple who wasn't there. His name starts with a T. That's right, Thomas. Pastor sometimes calls him Doubting Thomas. And he wasn't there when Jesus appeared. He wanted evidence that Jesus was alive too. In fact, Thomas had some major doubts. So let's find out what they were. In the book of John, chapter 20, verse 25, it says, So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Jesus knew Thomas had a hard time believing that he was alive. He knew Thomas wanted to touch the wounds. So he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand in the wound at my side and don't be faithless any longer. Believe. Would touching Jesus' wounds help you believe in him? I think it would help. It's kind of like maybe we don't realize how hot the stove is until we touch it. But once you touch it, whoo, you believe that thing is hot, don't you? When Jesus told Thomas he could touch his wounds, Thomas believed in Jesus. And then Jesus had a message for Thomas. In the book of John, chapter 20, verse 29, it says, Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen and have yet have still believed. Jesus helped his disciples believe in him. They got to see him, hear him, watch him eat, and even touch his wounds. We don't get to experience Jesus in such a physical way. But Jesus was alive then, Jesus is alive now, and Jesus helps us believe in him. He gives us the Bible, he answers to our prayers, and he sends loving people who can help us believe in him. So, let's take a second to say a prayer to Jesus right now. And what do we do when we pray? We fold our hands, bow our heads, close our eyes. Jesus, we can't see you, but we can see what you do in our lives. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending people to show us your love for us. Please help us believe in you more and more. In your name, amen. Wow, we covered a lot of material today. Jesus was arrested, punished, crucified, and then came back to life. But guess what? Now we're all caught up. Come back next week to see what he does next. But right now, I know you've been sitting there for a little while. So, are you ready for some dancing, some singing, and some music? I bet you are. Here we go.
I'm feeling good, good, good in a crazy way. God's love changed me more than I can say. Can't keep this in, gotta let it out. Gonna tell the whole world that your love is spinning me around and around. Yeah, it's turning me upside down. I can't believe the way you love me more than I can contain. I'm gonna turn around and give, give, give it away.
Let's say a prayer. What do we do when we pray? We fold our hands, bow our heads, close our eyes. Lord God, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for sending your son to earth to take our punishment. Lord Jesus, thank you for suffering for us, for dying on the cross for us, and for coming back to life in three days later to prove that you really were the Son of God. Thank you for saving us. In your name we pray, amen. That was a great lesson full of a whole bunch of information. If you have any questions, I'm sure you can ask the adults around you. They'll be happy to help you learn. Thank you for coming and learning with me, and I can't wait to see you next week. Love you guys. Bye.